can honestly say that something fundamental has shifted in my development process. And no, it was not the thing that led me to put a menu screen in the butt of my main character. So I'm working on a claymation inspired indie game. The game is called Forklift Flowerpot and you drive around this alien planet and change between three weird seasons to solve a mystery. And this is week two of a 12 part series where I am polishing the vertical slice of my game. The goal is to have the demo completed and on Steam by the end of this 12 week series. And this week I wisely decided to do all of the menus in my game. The title screen, the options screen, saving data on the options screen, the in-game menu, the map, the web logic board. Yeah, it was really easy just to say at the beginning of this series that I was just gonna do the menus in one week. And here we are at the end of that week. Monday and Tuesday were super speedy. I put in both a title screen and a pause screen. I felt like this tremendous momentum in my project. I was pulling all of these scripts and all of this functionality from my last game, Tendi. It's pretty easy, just take the pause screen, just take all of those options, sliders, and prefabs and drag them into the new project, hooking them up to where they need to be. Then Tuesday rolled around and I tried to get a little fancy, so I was going to add in all of these animations so that when you open up the menu it's not just static, it slowly fades in and all the text fades in, and I had quite the time trying to get all of the text mesh pro and all of the image components to fade in properly and not... Um, get slightly off every time you open the menu. It was just a lot of little details that took a lot longer than I expected. But I was doing all right. I still had Wednesday and Thursday to get the in-game menu. If you look at a lot of games for reference, and I sure did look at a lot of games for reference, I pulled all the information into a sheet I call my swipe file. You'll see that most games have several different categories of pause screen or menu. They'll have the applications pause screen, right, with your options menu, your exit, your return to title, and then you have this second category, which is often a diegetic kind of in-world interface. Stuff like your map, stuff like a journal. Games have been doing so much inventive stuff with how these diegetic interfaces feel like they're part of the world these days, and I really wanted to take my own spin on it. So I decided to take my little forklift character here, and when you turn the character around, there's a little screen there in the butt. A secret conspiracy web that helps you find the end of the game. This menu and general gameplay is actually inspired by the game Outer Wilds. If you haven't played it, you should check it out. So as you could tell, I wasn't getting out of scope with this idea at all. Things were moving along smoothly on Wednesday. I'm just kidding. I hit a brick wall of my motivation, realizing what a large task this was to make an in-world menu like this. When I said earlier that something fundamental shifted in my development process this week, that wasn't hyperbole. About a month ago, I gave a talk at a local game conference about how I think that progress-based milestones, like saying I'm going to finish this by this date, are actually kind of counterintuitive sometimes if you're in the long middle period of a long-term project. Look, the biggest risk to an indie developer, in my opinion, is that they will not finish their game. Indie developers should focus on building and maintaining momentum on a project above all else. For me personally, when I set these big milestones and I don't hit them or I run out of time to hit them, I end up feeling really bad about myself and about the project and about the progress I'm making and it bleeds into my everyday life and I just feel awful. So why not just focus on time then? Set an hour count as a goal rather than a milestone and you know that you can hit it. If you can carve out the amount of time in your life that you need to hit that goal, then you'll hit the goal. So I think I realized with this series going forward that I'm going to try to hit my goals, but at the end of the day, if I don't hit the milestone, I'm not going to let it bleed into my life again. So I'm feeling ready to call it done on this week and just move on to the next week. Oh yeah, and if you're interested in getting your Forklift Flowerpot certification, all you have to do is go to the Steam page and add it to your wish list, and I can announce that you are Forklift Flowerpot certified. So stay tuned for the next 10 weeks of Polishing the Vertical Slice, and I'll see you in the next one.